going to be one of the fastest America's Cups in history and one of the smallest bodies of water in the America's Cup that's ever reached. So how's that going to work? <laughs> Maybe you can help me. <laughs> the sailing area. This is my diagram, and then I'll show you the pretty one next. Basically, as per the protocol, we had to define what the area was going to be. And for some of those that are history buffs, they may remember that one race was lost in New Zealand because they ended up sailing outside the protocol area, was basically the footprint wasn't big enough. So to make sure that the footprint was big enough, uh, as per the protocol, they asked me to draw a box and I drew a box and you get to portage over here and do a little portaging over this section of land here. <laughs> but uh, that is the area that we have to stay within. Additionally, some of you may have noticed that there's this nice pretty red line through here. Well, that pretty red line is actually the deep water traffic lane of vessel traffic of the bay. And we, in conjunction with the port, the Coast Guard, are going to work with them to make sure that while we're running this 55-minute race, that uh, we'll hold traffic so that um, they don't impact on the race. We've spoken with the pilots and everybody else, and they've agreed that that's a workable deal. The idea is that we would start racing somewhere around well, not somewhere, exactly at 12 o'clock, because it'll be live TV. And we would finish around 5 o'clock. So during that period, we would create breaks where we could get commercial traffic in. But during the races itself, we will look to try and restrict that area. OK, now you got the pretty one. Again, it shows the lane. Uh, we see a spectator area, much like Fleet Week, along this area here on the bottom. We also envision a spectator area here and here, and depending upon demand, may see it come down this way, but not infringing on this uh, traffic lane. As far as the course itself goes, we don't know. We don't know what these boats are going to do, um, and we don't know how, much, how many laps of the bay they're going to have to do. Um, We've contemplated a windward mark outside the gate, inside the gate. We've contemplated leeward marks down around Blossom or even further into the bay. Reach marks and mid-course gates are also all up on the table. Um, at the end of April, beginning of May, um, we are running a test event in New Zealand. And our goal is that we'll have uh, four to six of the boats. Um, there for two weeks and we're going to design some courses to try and figure out what works. We need to go and get with the teams to figure out how quickly they actually get around the course, how many laps that would entail, um, and then also work with the media to make sure that uh, we're getting those boats as close to the shore as we can when we want to get them there. We'll have an idea of how narrow the corridor for the racing we can make. So one of the things that you could consider is if the windward mark was in this area here and this was a wall of um, spectator boats, and obviously we have a wall here of spectator boats in the shore, this is going to force the boats to tack. And if we move that spectator thing in closer, it makes them tack more, which may be something we want to do depending upon how much we want to compress the racing. <laughs> so the idea is to make it challenging for the competitors and also to make the amphitheater as tight as we can make it. So yes, this is the spectator area. Just like in Fleet Week, this is the spectator area. But it's really what you're trying to do is not keep them in the spectator area. You're trying to keep them outside of the race course. Me, personally, as the race manager, I'd love to see a lot of boats out there, but I'd also be just as happy if there was a bunch of people sitting on shore watching it. The 72s will do their very first event, which will be here in um, August of 2012. And they'll, they will do their first event here, and then they'll do their second event here as well, which will be the one in September. Well, let's go for the America's Cup, where we will be doing only one race a day is kind of what we're thinking. 
I mean, it may be two, but right now we're looking at one. And that would, of course, be schedule dependent and dependent on a million other things. But if you think you've got the pre-start, everybody getting out, getting warmed up, go do that race and come back, um, that's going to turn into an hour and a half, two hour TV show. And that's, that's probably pretty good. Basically, this is the city overview plan. And um, here at Chrissy Field, we'll have public access that'll be free, paid. We'll also have press areas and um, sponsor areas that'll also be in the Chrissy Field area. Up here in the top, we envision we'll have a large group of spectator boats that will be in this area here. We envision Alcatraz will actually provide a really good venue uh, to watch the racing from. Additionally, Mar Marina Green, um, we've got public access that's all free and paid. That'll be in this area here. Um, down at the piers, public access as well as sponsor access and media. And then we'll have our more access down here at Pier 3032, which we'll build out. What we've got here is at Kavala Point. We also see that as a potential viewing site. We would envision that there'd be uh, general merchandise sales, food, beverage, all those kind of things that uh, one would expect. And we'll see those throughout the city. Um, the Marina Green, we actually envision an AC village, which would be a village that people would come to to learn about the America's Cup. There would be a touch and feel to that area. A children's area, sponsors displays, and we feel that that area there um, could be kind of an AC center. Also Aquatic Park, we look to use it as an area for displays. Also trying to uh, do some maybe event type uh, seating and uh, sponsor display areas there. Proposed piers 19 and 29. The development of these piers is based on uh, getting our documentation sorted. But as you see, we envision this area here being the village. We'll have team spaces down below. There'll be public access. Uh, we envision actually finishing the races off the end of this pier. Um, and this area here we see as a dock space for larger spectator boats a little smaller here. The AC operations will be in here with their fleet of boats. We'll have a drop in, drop out area here so people can come in, um, drop competitors off. We'll have a media area that will come out. And our goal would be to try and bring the teams as best we can to that area after racing and before racing. Currently, right now, Pier 80 is uh, scheduled to uh, be where uh, we'll set up for 2012. Team bases are going to be down here. Our uh, youth sailing program will be uh, based out of there. And then we've got that staging area to the left. Taking the blue box away, basically we've set it up for 10 teams. Um, and these are containers that are turned into their uh, operations. About two years ago, the College National Championship uh, was uh, hosted by the St. Francis Yacht Club, but it was run in conjunction with the Golden Gate Yacht Club. One of the things that happened over those eight days is we had 18 teams from across the country, and there were lots of parents and lots of spectators. But one of the things that really struck me out of that whole event was that from this Yacht Club to the St. Francis was lined up with uh, chairs with spectators in them, parents. Lots and lots of people walking by, coming to check out what was going on. And those teams, although they were in FJs, were all tacking up and down the shore, and you felt like you could reach out and touch them. And you could hear them actually talk about the tactics as they were going up wind. You tack here, room, all of that. And it was so close that everybody felt that they were part of it. And it was one of a, a small, small event. But it was an amazing event, and to me it was one of the events that just once again showcased how cool it is if you can get people on shore to see the racing. And that is what this 
amphitheater this bay is going to be able to provide. Um, these boats are going to end up being 72 feet long. They'll be doing 30 plus knots and they are going to cover the square footage of this bay very, very quickly. And they're going to use all of it. And so it's going to provide an incredible opportunity for people to see the racing from shore. And it's our hope that, as uh, Gary indicated, that we can take it outside of this fanatical group in here that all love sailing and get it out into the public.